In this video, we're going to look at something called half-life. So when we have radioactive isotopes, what happens is that they decay into other isotopes. So the half-life is the amount of time that it takes for half of your sample of that radioactive isotope to decay into a different isotope. So if it undergoes alpha decay or beta decay, uh, and it becomes another element like some of the reactions that we looked at. Um, but remember that those atoms don't disappear, they just become something else, a different substance. They change their identity. So let's take a look at a half-life problem. Um, what I suggest you do is read the problem and then set yourself a chart. So you're going to put number of half-lives, the mass of your sample, and your time. Now, in this problem, it's telling us that we have 12 and a half grams of the original isotope left from our original 100 gram sample after five hours. So it's asking us how long the half-life is. So that may be a little different than problems that you've done maybe in your math class. So let's take a look at that. So remember at the very beginning of the problem, we have no half-lives have passed. This is our original sample. So the mass of that sample is 100 grams and no time has passed. After the first half-life, we know that half of the sample has decayed, so there are still 50 grams left that are the original isotope. We don't know how much time has passed because this problem is asking us to find the half-life. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what to fill in for the rest of the table. After another half-life, again, half of the sample will have decayed, so half of what you had after the first half-life will be the mass that's left. So 50 grams will become 25 grams. And again, we don't know how much time has passed, so we need to try to fill in another row. After the third half-life, half of that 25 grams will be left. So that'll be 12.5 grams. And at that point from the problem, we know that five hours have passed. So if we want to know how to figure out what the half-life is, we need to do a little math here. So we're trying to figure out the time per half-life. So we know that we've had five hours of time, and we can divide that by the number of half-lives. And so we know that there are five hours per three half-lives. So there's actually, if you punch this into your calculator, you would get 1.67, and that would be hours per half-life. And so you could actually fill that in. That would be 1.67. And then this would be 3.33 for the time that passed. And then again, you, the five hours would work. So just that's one type of problem that you could see from this. Let's look at another one. This will probably look a little bit more familiar to you. So we've got a sample of selenium with a mass number of 72 that has a half-life of 8.4 days. How much of a 450-gram sample of selenium-72 will remain after 42 days? So again, I'm going to encourage you to set up a table. And you can see number of half-lives, mass of sample, and time. So at the very beginning, no half-lives have passed. We're starting with 450 grams, and no time has passed. Now, after the first half-life, our sample half of the sample will remain, so 225 grams, and the time that will have passed will be one half-life for 8.4 days. So see if you can fill in the next couple rows, and we'll work our way through the problem. Go ahead and pause if you need to. All right, for the next row, after the second half-life, half of that 225 grams remains, so you should have 112.5 grams. And after that time, you've had another half-life, so 8.4 days plus the 8.4 days from the first half-life would give you 16.8 days. Now go ahead and look at your third row. So after the third half-life, you divide 112.5 by 2, and that should give you 56.25 grams. See if you can figure out the time. Many of you probably put 33.6 days. That's wrong. It's a common misconception. You're not doubling the time each time. You're adding 8.4 days each time. So that's going to be 25.2, three half-lives. So three times 8.4. All right, so just wanted to point that out. 
Now for the fourth half-life, again 56.25, the mass that remains divided by 2, so we'll just give that a rounded 28.13 grams. And then you add another 8.4 days, which gives us our time of 33.6 days. And then in the next uh, half-life, the fifth half-life, 28.13 we divide by uh, for, uh, sorry, we divide by 2, and that gives us 14.06 grams. And when you add that 8.4 days to 33.6 days for that fifth half-life, you end up with 42 days. So after 42 days, we know that 14.06 uh, grams will remain, and that would be your answer for that. One thing you may be familiar with when it comes to half-lives is radiocarbon dating. So you may have heard of the use of the half-life of carbon-14 or carbon dating to estimate the death of organic matter. So it's based on us knowing the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 in plants and animals, and that helps us estimate dates of fossils and things like that. Here's a little cartoon for you, and I'll see you in class.